not reading it. And so next, we must remember that the, the spiritual life, serving God, walking in Christ, is like being in a tug of war. We constantly tugged one way or the other. We have to either make the right decision or, the, and, or we end up battling to fight against making the wrong decision. So I'm just going to show you a little clip. And I want you to look at it and I want you to just think about what message you get out of this. Um, it's the first link, Bruce. Can I, must I can click on it? Yes, where it says two kids. This is also a type of tug of war. Okay. Um, okay, there's no sound, eh? So we see, no, we see the boy on the left is battling, he's fighting, he wants that rolling pin, he wants his way, he wants to do what he thinks is the best way, thing to do. But the other one has that smile of, you can pull, brother, but I've got this. Watch that face, watch that assurance on his face, the one on the right-hand side. He's assured of the fact that he is going to get this rolling pin. Whether the other one has two hands on it, he's got two hands on the handle. And that's the way we have to deal with issues in our lives. We find that we constantly have to, um, we constantly have to fight to make the right decisions in life. I'm not sure what's happening. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, it's not showing. Let me copy it. Okay, I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm looking at my slide, so it's fine. So, we, so we notice that as Christians, we are walking in a battleground between God and Satan. And just as God wishes for us to grow in spiritual maturity, so we have a spiritual enemy who wishes to prevent that from happening. And so the Bible calls the enemy the devil or Satan in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. So in this next session, we will begin to learn how God can have the victory and how we can be certain of victory. So let us pray. Lord, we pray that as we look into your word, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us and reveal what you want us to see. And we pray your blessing on all our activities in Jesus' name. Amen. So although this session is based on 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which we'll look at later, I first want you to look at Galatians 5, 16 to 26. I'm just going to read through these slides because we're going to go into our break up uh, small groups. And then we're going to look at these slides and we're going to do the exercises in our small groups. If I just carry on with this, Bruce, if we break away, will they still be able to hear me? Um, I don't know. Let me try. No. I don't think so. Okay, so I'll just go through the slides and we'll go into our breakaway groups and we'll discuss it in our smaller groups. Okay. So, so we're going to look at two opposing sides. The one is in, mentioned in Galatians 5, verse 16 to 26. And these are the questions we're going to look at. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. We're going to identify things produced in our lives by our sinful nature. We're going to look at what is wrong with those things. We're we, um, going to have an opportunity if anyone wants to share a testimony of how they experience God delivering them from any of those things they battled with. And um, we can maybe talk about how we felt when we felt torn in two different directions. And we're going to discuss if we are struggling with those areas. The other view is we're going to look at things in Galatians 5, 22 to 26, and we're going to identify those things that are produced in our lives by God's spirit. And we're going to ask everyone in our little group to identify someone else whom they feel had a particular fruit and ask them how that is evident.
And at the end of that shedding, we'll pray for one another. Just remember there's a tug of war between the spirit of God and Satan for control of our lives. And this goes on every day. But the spirit of God is stronger. So can we go into our groups? Sure. I'll send the, the questions once you're all in groups. Okay.
Well, we can't see the slides when we're in the different groups. Huh? Bruce, you can leave. The, you can leave this group, but actually, Bruce needs to. Bruce, 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 call him Bruce. Yeah, I, I can see Bruce's backdrop, but there's no Bruce. Ah, here's Bruce. Uh, Bruce, Estelle, Estelle is asking that you send up the next slide, send up the next questions. Which which one? I have no idea, Estelle, which one? Referring to Galatians 5.24. Okay, let me have a look. And if you can send me back to room one, please. Yes, I will. Can you see the slides from your room, James? No, you can't. Okay, so I'll just send the messages up, eh? Okay. Let's assign you back. Estelle was room two. I, I was in room one. Oh, uh, room one. Yeah, and somehow you put me into room two. And thank you so much, room two. I can move you back. Yeah, please move me back to room one. Cool, there we go. You're mm -hmm. in there. Eh? Uh, sorry, Bruce, not on this profile. There's uh, another picture of me in the green jersey. I'm in group two. Uh, okay. I just joined the second device that I could communicate with you. So whose group were you in, Estelle or? I mean, I'm in Estelle's group at the moment, but I should be, I was in group one when we started. Okay, I'll move you there now. There we go. Ah. <laughs> sorted. That's sorted, thank you, Bruce. Okay. <laughs>
Hello, Estelle. Are you there? Okay, Buri, Kelvin, I'm here. Oh, okay. Is Estelle there? I'm here. I feel like there's more participants now. Oh, okay. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can. I no. can. Okay. okay, fine. Yes, I am here. Um, oh, all as, right. I, 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 we in our group managed to do the next um, lot of questions, which yes. I don't think the other group saw. So what I, I would like did. did they? Okay, good. They did. I think okay. group two, group two actually did the 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 second questions. Okay. Yes, but when I good. actually got in there, um, um, they they covered almost everything. Okay, so yes. we're not yeah we're not gonna go to the through the rest of the slides. I will the slides will be available if anybody wants it, then they can go through it together. And we had a time okay. of prayer in our group, so we can go to the next step if that's okay with everybody. That's yeah, it. we went through the questions in our group and we also did prayer. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So then we can move over to Pam. Is it Pam on now? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Over to you, Pam. Hi, everybody. Um, Hello, Pam. Hi. Okay. And then I'm going to switch the camera. <laughs> I, just to, I just wanted to greet everyone. So they're not like... <laughs> <laughs> but we want to see you. We want to see you. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> um, okay. Um, can we start off with a prayer? Um, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father Lord, we thank you for this day again. Um, we thank you for the love that you have shown us over and over again. We thank you for um, allowing us to be here today. And uh, we know that it's not because we're smarter than others, but it is because of your grace that we know that we do not deserve. Um, we thank you um, for this opportunity. We thank you for this journey um, and Father, I pray for every single person that is here today that they're just not present by name, but they are present by heart, by soul, by mind, and that they allow themselves as much as they can um, from everything that has been discussed here today. Um, I pray, Father Lord, that they have peace within their hearts and that they receive the words and the messages and even the hidden messages, Father Lord, that are from you. And Lord, that they do not just think that it is uh, Pam or Stell or uh, Reverend Bruce or Reverend Woolley that um, are conducting this training, but that they believe that this is their time and you have called them here today because there's a purpose um, for their lives and for them to share whatever it is that they're going to take from uh, these lessons in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Um, the lesson or the teaching that um, I'm going to be doing today is uh, session three, which is rewards and challenges of ministry. Um, and what I like, I think from the group that I was, uh, that there's about, there were seven of us in our group and from a lot of the stuff that we uh, discussed, uh, lucky for, I think, our group, I had the green book with me, <laughs> book one, so we were able to go through all the questions, and I realized that, you know, um, 
that lesson that we just had now um, somehow links into what we're about to uh, go into, the rewards and challenges of um, ministry. Before we start, so that we are all in the same uh, page, can everyone open uh, Luke 8? Because this teaching, this session, um, has got to do with Luke 8, mainly versus um i'll tell you now verses 11 to verses 15. so this is luke chapter 8 verses 11 to verses 15. um but i will start reading from verses 1. So the point of this lesson is in this journey. So obviously I'm, we've spoken a lot about why we're here and what uh, Roots in Jesus is about. It's about building disciples and um, to make sure that the participants have a re realistic view of the work which lies ahead um, so that they will be ready to persevere through setbacks because um, we know that in the journey of getting closer to God, there will be setbacks because we know that there are spirits out there that are ready to hold us back in our journeys of faith. So if we can all open it again, Luke 8, uh, we're gonna be looking at the parable of uh, the sower. Okay. Um, and the slides are all showing, eh? All showing. Yeah. All right. Mm, okay. Let's see. Okay. Can you can you not show them? And then can you just give them? To they are showing. Them? Everyone can see them. That's what I'm saying to you. Everyone can see them. You just tell me when to change, and I'll change. Okay, I would prefer that you don't show them. Because then it's just, because I feel like it's going to sound too much of a listen. And then you can just give them okay. to everyone at the end. Okay. Okay. There we Thank go. You so much. Thank you. Okay, so. So we're going to look at the story about the farmer, right? Uh, and we're going to look at four realistic views. So what we're looking at here is that in ministry, there are rewards, but in ministry, there's also challenges that we go through, right? So when you form your groups, you're going to have groups of six to 12 people. And in those groups, not everybody's going to be the same. Not everyone is going to receive what you'll be sharing with them the same way. Some people will be ready to receive a bit. Some people will be raised, ready to receive a, a, a lot. Some people will think they are ready to receive um, everything until they go through, uh, until they start the journey or go through a certain challenges um, in that journey. So if we look at Luke, um, the first view that we're gonna look at is Luke 8 verses 11 to 12, which reads, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Okay, I'm gonna start from the beginning so that I think we have read this before, we know what we're talking about. The parable of the sower. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons 
had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of her household, Susanna, and many others, these women are helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathered and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattered the seed, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but not, but to others I speak in parables so that those seeing they may not see, those hearing they may not understand. So we'll start with the first parable. With the first, I mean, uh, Verse People who hear the word, but the devil comes and takes it away from their hearts, like the third, like the bird in the sketch. So that's 11 to 12. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is a word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. So the first view we look at is, in your groups, you're gonna come across people who will hear the word of God, but the devil will come and take it away from their hearts. Just like the, bit, just like the bird uh, in the sketch. Um, so this will happen to you too. And when it does, it's not um, your failure. Your job is to be faithful and obedient to God. They, there are people that you that are gonna join your groups and they're going to hear the word of God, but it's not, it's not gonna change their hearts. They're not going to be able to receive uh, the word of God. So this is a seed that fell on the pot. So you need to know that this is going to happen and it's okay. It's okay that there'll be people that will join your groups. They'll come in, they'll hear the word of God, but their hearts, the, the word won't sit in their heart. They won't be able to receive. They'll just be like, um, okay. And then they'll just carry on with the life or the lives that they're living. And then the second one is Luke 8, which is verses uh, 13. And that says, those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no roots. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. So this seed will fall on rocky ground. So these people, when, they, when the seed falls on them, they will receive the word. But in time of testing, they'll fall away. Meaning when they come across or face any problems, when they get tested, maybe it might be family that might be like, oh, you've changed. Oh, you're so different now. Oh, you and your Jesus, you and your God. Um, yo, why are you a Christian now? Oh, since you ever became a Christian, you're so annoying. You know the things that people say to, to others when they try to change their lives. Um, you know, the, the, the people at work might be like, ish, ever since this one got saved, ah, it's Jesus this, Jesus that, you know? Sometimes Satan will, will whisper things in your ear. Um, he'll whisper lies to you just to make you confused or to make you question if, you know, um, have you taken the right decision to give your life to God? 
um, sometimes it might be the situations in your life, like the hard situations that we go through in our lives, where um, you receive you, 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 it's in your heart. But because of everything that you're going through, then you ask yourself, you go, but you know, I've received the word of God. I, I, I hear it, I, I understand the message, but why is my life still so hard? But obviously if you're not rooted and believe and understand that when you do receive the word of God, you need to be unshaken. You need to be rooted in your faith, you know? Um, an example that they've got given here is um, a friend. Uh, someone had a friend whose baby died. Um, and this is someone who had received the word of God, um, who had the word of God in their hearts. But when they faced hardship, their faith dried up because they were not rooted. Their faith wasn't in abundance. Their faith was not uh, um, that strong. They were not rooted in God. They just receive and you put it in your heart. But in terms of allowing it to sit there, understanding the word of God in depth, really having your faith be everything and giving yourself and surrendering yourself to God. When hard times happen, then you become shaken. Like in the beginning of, of uh, this journey, we spoke about uh, the roots of a tree. So if your roots are not that deep in Jesus, if your roots are not that deep, then when hard times come, you're gonna get shaken because you're in rocky ground, which means that this that seed landed in, 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 in um, that kind of ground. And when we receive the word of God and when we keep it in our hearts, we need to really let it stay in there. We really need to believe. Our faith needs to be that strong so that when we go through hard things, we stay believing and we stay believing that this is our new life. God is the answer to everything. So in your groups, you will find people that will come to the lessons, that will come uh, to your Roots in Jesus groups. But they'll, when, you when you go through your memory verses and you go through your uh, book one or your book two, they'll hear the word. But when they go out to the world and for example, at home, they go, guys, can we pray together? And everyone at home goes, ah, ish, you've started, ah, so And then they start questioning things. And that's when the devil comes and whispers lies. You know, when they get to work and people are gossiping in the corner and then they stand up and they leave and people go and say, why are you standing up and leaving? Hey, you have you think you're better, you know? But in your new journey, you can't be sitting in corner offices and gossiping about people. That's not a godly thing to do. Um, so those are the, the, the challenges that would come. The third one is in Luke chapter eight, verses 14, where it says, the seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear. So they hear the word, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. We spoke a lot about this in uh, the group that I was in, that there are temptations. So you will hear the word of God. You will receive it in your heart, but you stay in the same place. Your faith does not mature. You don't mature in Christ because there are other things that are pulling you away. There are other things that are tempting you. Things like riches, money. We spoke about power. We spoke about different things that are uh, that sort of pull you away from your journey. Um, sometimes the bad things in life stop people from following God, but sometimes it's actually the good things that stop people from following God. When people start seeing my opportunities of money, they forget about God. They forget about their faith. Um, you know, people start chasing money instead of saying and giving themselves to God 
and allowing God to guide them and take them to um, where they are meant to be, allowing God's will to be done upon their lives. They forget, you know, um, in your group, you'll find people that will come, they'll hear the word, they'll receive in their heart, they'll start living like that. But the next thing, they're not coming to meetings and you call and you check up, oh, so and so, why are you not here today? Is everything okay? We missed you in today's meeting or in today's group session. And they're like, no, I was working, I was busy. Uh, you know, I'm sometimes a little bit guilty, guilty of that. Um, but, you know, these are the things that sometimes if, if, if you read, if you allow, they will take you away from God. But in your pursuit of, I, I can't even say a better life because the, the better life is with God. The better life is having Jesus in your life. You need to find some form of balance. You cannot, I think, take all your time and give it to pursuing um, a, a better financial life but you have to be able to balance out and have time for God. A friend of mine, um, Derem Zoe, was saying to me this week, Pam, you know, you're so busy. Um, I hope you uh, are taking time out for God. I hope you're, you know, you, 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 are you she says to me, are you, do you fast? And I said to him, I mean, I've got no iron, <laughs> I try to fast. But my, my fasting uh, is not really food fasting, but it's just staying away from certain things. And said, no, Pam, um, you know, do you understand that the whole point of fasting is to draw yourself closer to God? And he was saying, it's, gotten, it's not really about food. There's other ways to fast. And because the whole idea is to draw yourself closer to God, bring yourself closer to God. And you just, if you can promise and just make sure that you do take time out in your busy schedule and give that time to God. Just say to yourself, from this time to that time, no phone, no nothing, no this, I'm just going to stay in prayer and, and, and be with God, spend that time uh, with God. And, you know, that really does help. And I think also just um, surrounding yourself with uh, like-minded people, not only, I think, Surrounding yourself with surrounding yourself with like-minded people who are in this journey and who will remind you that the way of God and not allowing certain things, certain certain worldly things to take over your life. Um, things like power, you know, the power, the only power that we actually should really be worrying about is having enough power to stay away from temptation so that we can focus on our faith, so that we can focus on the Lord. That's the power we should be worrying about. So this seed that got choked by thorns, hears the word of God, allows the word of God in their heart, but gets choked up by worldly things. Because these things that we're mentioning are actually worldly things. Sorry, Bruce, I was just trying to charge my phone. That's the noise. And the last one to look at is verses 15, which says, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word retain it and by persevering produce a crop. I'm gonna read this one again, it's so close to my heart because I feel like this is my daily um, life. But the seed on the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it and by persevering by persevering produces a crop. You will come across people in your group that will hear the word. They will retain, they will persevere 
and they'll produce a crop. So these are the seeds that will bear fruits, that will go on to build other disciples. It means that you this, this, have chosen this day to put God before everything. Whether it's home, whether it's family, whether it's work. And we pray that, you know, and you will pray for the people in your groups to make this kind of choice. And I like that you pray. I think sometimes in a pursuit for living a faithful life, we forget that the key thing here is prayer. Because again, as much as um, these four things are speaking about, these four realistic views are speaking about the people that are going to be in your group. They're also speaking about you yourself. Are you going to just allow people to hear the word? Or, and just be like, ah, they didn't hear it. Okay, oh well, I can't help that one. Or are you going to be, you know, there are people that are going to, are you going to just allow people to hear the word? And are you just gonna be happy that it's in their heart? And then are you just gonna be like, oh, okay, fine. They heard it, it's in their hearts, it's all good. Or is it going to be, uh, they hear it, it's in their hearts. Oh, well, it just didn't work out. I mean, you know what? Yeah, that one is all about work anyways. Let me let them carry on with their job and let me let them carry on with whatever it is that they're doing. And at least they heard it. At least it's in their hearts. But hey, so what if they don't mature in Christ and they don't mature in their faith? And are you just going to be like, ah, you know, let me move on to the next one. Or are you going to be the kind of leader in your group that will be in the journey with every single person in there? Are you going to persevere? Are you going to be consistent? Are you going to check up on your group members? Learn to see where their hearts are at by communicating with them, by creating those relationships, by being a part of their lives. Being a group leader means that you're giving yourself to these people. You're creating the kind of relationships where even when they have difficulties, they're not embarrassed or shy to say, you know, leader person, I'm, uh, I, do, I do feel like I'm, I'm, I'm steering away from this journey that I started. They should be able to talk to you about anything. They should, they should be able to share their fears with you. They should be able to uh, share their worries with you. You should also be the kind of leader that is persistent. But you have to be very gentle and you have to be very caring in your approach. You can't be bombarding people. You can't be uh, in their faces. You can't be putting too much pressure on them because that's not the way that uh, Jesus uh, did it. You have to take care. You have to be gentle and you have to bring them in with care and with love and that is how you're going to have seeds that will be fruits. Seeds that will say, I'm starting this journey and my journey is above my home. My journey is above my family. My journey is above my work. And those are the rewards. Those are the rewards that you will have, but also understanding that you will have challenges in your ministry of um, people that you will share the word with, but they'll fall, fall off along the way. But it doesn't mean give up on those people. But sometimes you won't give up, but they just will not come around. We have challenges in our own ministries. Um, we have challenges. I think our churches have challenges uh, where there's, like especially uh, sure. 
in our churches, there's so many uh, challenges that are there. The rewards are seeing people come up to you and say, Father, your sermon just did home. You know, the sermon that you gave last week, Father, um, I shared it with my family and I, I could see some changes within my home. Those are rewards. And then there's the challenges uh, where you're tested by parishioners that um, either want to smear your name or parishioners that either just want to complain, oh, your sermon is so long. Oh, um, why are you always preaching about the same thing? Oh, this, you don't know how to preach. Oh, just this, so we know what the challenges are in our churches, you know? Um, and I think the, the, the weight is so much on the priest, but I think it's also just great that um, there is help. There's help of the lay ministers, uh, assistant priests uh, within the church. So we shouldn't just look at rewards and challenges of ministry, just only with Ruth and Jesus. But in our own churches, how do we deal with uh, challenges? You know, we need to know that in our world, the devil is not going to just sit back and be like, oh, yay, be great in your faith. Uh, follow Jesus. <laughs> you know, let the whole world be great. He's going to be right there in every corner trying to make sure that you fall apart, trying to make sure that good does not prevail, but we know good prevails. We just need to be consistent. We just need to use our weapon of prayer. We just need to stay on God's path. We just need to be rooted in Jesus. We need to know and accept that there will be challenges. And when we have those challenges, it does not take us away from God. It's okay to remove yourself from a situation, but do not remove yourself from God. Remove yourself from a situation, but do not remove yourself from God. I always say, and people always look at me strangely, I always say, you know, um, giving your life to God is not only a church. Giving your life to God is in every aspect of your life. In your own family, at work, your friends, and just out there in the world you're still giving yourself to God. You're still making a change. You're still growing disciples. So you are the change. You need to be consistent in how you give yourself to the Lord in order to grow disciples. In the challenges, we should not say, I give up. We should not say, there's no God, or it's not enough, or he's not enough. God is enough. It's very important to understand that there are challenges, but it's also very important and very beautiful to understand and believe that being consistent in God and praying and giving and surrendering to him will only make his kingdom that much greater. Um, I'm just going to give you one uh, last example. Um, Isaiah, I don't know how to pronounce this properly, Chambala, Chambala was a pastor. He became the Lutheran Jesus coordinator. Now he's a bishop. Isaiah um, has seen God's blessing many people through his program. He came um, to Malawi and uh, he told the story. They planted maize seeds and rats came and ate them. So they planted again and rats, rats came to, rats came, ate again. They planted again. When the crop had sprouted, the grasshoppers came and ate them. But despite all the difficulties, they all went on planting and planting and planting. So what? is the lesson of this, is that he did not give up. They did not give up. They believed and they trusted that it was going to harvest. Mm -hmm. So the same thing. 
if we monitor, we will discover that the problems and the difficulties can be managed. And at the end, things will harvest. So when you go back and start your groups, it's not gonna be easy. You will face some difficulties, but we do encourage you to be persistent because you will harvest. We know that there's so many things around us that are here to stop us from growing disciples, that are here to stop us from creating a world that has believers and people that are going to fight for God's kingdom. But it starts, I think, with us. Not I think, I know it starts with us. It starts with us. And then, I think I always say that when people see me, like I never forget this. When people see me, I would like them to look into my face and see Jesus himself. But that is by my actions, that is by my doing, that is by my actions, that is by the way that I speak. You know, sometimes angry people, they speak to you in an angry way. When they hear care and love in how you reply, they might still carry on speaking in an angry way. At some point, they will succumb to the tenderness in your voice and the way that you speak. Because you need to be persistent. You need to make the change within your own life. If you make the change within your own life and you truly walk like Jesus, be persistent with your group members when you start your groups. Don't bombard them. Don't be arrogant. Don't be a, a mister or a miss know-it-all. But be persistent, be loving, be caring. And you will reap more rewards. But you have to overcome the challenges of the person that you will call and they'll be like, oh, I'm busy, I'll call you back. And you call them again to check, oh, I'm busy and I'll call you back. You call again, you call again. At some point, they will speak to you and you'll be surprised at the conversation that you'll have. Oh, you know, I really want to come back to the group and be there and, oh, but you know, I'm just like, oh, I'm busy with this, I'm doing that. And you'll get into a, a deep conversation that you're not even ready for. And they will find, I think, a trust in you, care. And at some point you create that relationship with that person. And that is how you draw people in because they need to see love. There's just, there's not enough love out there, but you get, they will get to see love through you. So you need to outsmart the challenges of ministry, but you will not be able to outsmart the challenges without putting God first, without walking like Jesus yourself, without prayer, without staying rooted yourself. How can you look for something from someone else that you yourself, you have not, you're not living, that you're not being. Bruce, can you please close in prayer for us? Bruce? So let's all put on our cameras while we pray. On. Yes, please. <laughs> Because we haven't seen each other. <laughs> Everyone else? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could come together this evening on Zoom. We thank you for the things of technology, like the internet, for PowerPoint, for different people's laptops and cell phones. Lord, we, we apologize for the glitches that happened because of just techno technology. These things happen. We pray for next week that, that uh, just as this week there was progress in terms of, of the way things happen, we pray for more of that progress 
in next week's meeting. We thank you for the group time that we were able to share together. We ask you to help us to, to, to communicate in those small groups next week as well. Thank you for Estelle and for, for Pam and for the, the teaching that they helped us with and helped us see this evening. We ask that you help to, us to Im implement that into our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless all. We will say that... We will share the recordings of, of the, the, the last two weeks have been uh, shared and then this evening will as well. So if, so if there's anything you want to look up, it will be available. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thank Thanks, Bruce. Thank everyone, and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Ah, great. Wonderful. I cannot hear this scene now. <laughs>